Hello, this video will talk about Lumen's OHM product and how it can be used in Brightspace by D2L. Lumen's OHM product is basically similar to a textbook product that fits inside of D2L. Um, it is $25 per student to access. The student logs into D2L and when they click on the first assessment within the course, it will ask them to put in their access code that they've either purchased from the bookstore or they can buy it online at that time. And again, it's about $25 per student. The faculty can customize this course in their Lumen OHM account, which they have access to, and then they export it and import it right into D2L. And at that point, everything is done in D2L. The grade items are created in D2L as students complete the assessment so that the gradebook is complete. This D2L integration keeps students from needing a special course code or logging into a separate portal because everything is done in D2L for the students. The courses are built and ready to go, uh, so you can just export them and put them in, and they're already, um, already prepackaged with all the materials and assessments, but faculty members can edit them if they like. Faculty can also create assignments, discussions, and etc. in D2L in addition to the course package from Lumen. So while the Lumen course package will be in D2L, they can continue to add in specialty um, assignments, discussions, things that they just like to have in their course. Hello, this video will review how to use Lumen's OHM course shell into your Brightspace by D2L course. So the first step is you want to log into your Lumen OHM account. And this is something that Lumen would give you access to. Um, by Oftentimes they will have already loaded a course here for you based upon your conversations with them. But you can also pick your own courses and copy your own courses. So Lumen OHM courses are usually science or math based courses. Um, and so your first step is you want to add a new course here in Lumen OHM. And again, the main process is going to be to go ahead and build it in Lumen OHM, export it, and then import it into Brightspace by D2L, which I'll walk you through how to do that. So the first step is to add a new course. So when we add a new course, we can start with a completely blank course. We can copy a template course, or we can copy from an existing course. More than likely, you're going to be doing the template course or the existing course. So say for example that these are courses that I've taught in a previous semester and I just want to copy that content over and reset my due dates, make some minor edits, and go from there. So in that case I would add a new course, copy from an existing course, pick my courses, and then select the course that I want to copy from. Say that this was last semester's course and I just want to copy it over to um, make some edits. So that's an option. Another option is copy a template course. So from here, you can look at the different levels, you can look at the different textbooks, and you can pick a course that has already been created by Lumen and you can make edits from there. So say for example, I want to look at um, some college algebra courses and maybe I have a specific type of um, textbook that I like. And then from there, I'm able to look at it. I'm actually even able to preview the course here. And I'm able to scroll down and see what the modules would look like. I can click on these and look at the content items to see what the content's going to look like for the students and how they describe information. And then I'm also able to go in and practice the practice test as well as the quizzes to see what it would look like. So in that case, if you wanted to use that course, you could copy this course and go about it that way. So again, most of the time you won't start with a blank course. You'll either be copying a template course, one of Lumen's courses already created, or copying an existing course that you already have. So I'm going to copy an existing course that I already have, and I'm going to choose my chemistry for majors that I taught last semester. And I'm going to continue from there. So now I can give it a name. You very well might want to name it, you know, the name of the semester so that you don't get them confused. So summer 2021 chemistry for majors or whatnot. Then you can come down and choose the course options that you might want. Really the main things would be rubrics if you use them or display a top instructor forum post. You probably don't want to copy the calendar items because you're going to want to put in your new calendar items and reset those due dates to align with your new due dates. 
So you do want to change the availability and access. Um, of course, you want it to be available to students, and then you want to put in the start and end date. So we'll just say that the course is starting today and it's ending in May. So you would just put the start and end date for the course. You can also go ahead and put a start and end date for default items in the course. So a lot of times people will have things open up at say 12.01 a.m. and have them end at 11.59 p.m. And that's just a default there for you so that you don't have to put it in every single course or every single item. But of course you can um, individually change those items if necessary. So we're not um, going to change any of the self-enrollment or copy course item information because this is not something you will need when you uh, export the course into D2L. We're not going to mess with the LTI integration. That's not something you need if you are doing something in D2L. And then here is some defaults that you can set for the course which might be helpful. So late passes, um, you can auto assign late passes, you can extend the late passes, um, you can uh, change the messaging system, all of those types of things if you want to. And then we're going to submit that. So that's going to copy the course over. Now the good thing is you don't have to worry about the course ID because when this integrates and gets put into D2L, um, it will all be seamless. You won't need a course ID. Uh, the students won't need the course ID. All right, so now I go back to my home screen for Lumen OHM and you notice that my sample course um, has been created. This was the one that I'm creating for this semester. Again, a good idea is to put the semester itself in the course title, spring 2021 or whatnot. So I'm going to click on that. And here I can edit the different uh, components, but the main area I'm going to edit, since this is going to end up in D2L, is just this main area here with the content. So notice that there are lots of options over here on the side. For the most part, you're not going to be editing any of that stuff because you won't need it once you integrate it into D2L. So again, the main thing is to scroll down and to look at these materials here. So the faculty resources and the student resources are here in every course, and they're mainly just teaching you and teaching the students how to access and use the Lumen tools. So probably not something you're going to want to edit or mess with. It's really when you start to get to module one is where you're going to see the data be and the information be specific to your course. So we're going to scroll down and we'll be able to see module one which is essential ideas and these are all the different items within that module. Now I can come here if I want to, I can delete the entire module if I say, okay, I'm just not going to teach that content in the course, um, I'm, welcome, I'm wel welcome to do that. I'm also able to move it so that maybe I do teach this concept, but I teach it later in the course. I can move it around and I can say I want it to be after module three. Um, and I can just put it at the top of the block and move it and basically it just moves that to the third module now. It moves everything down so that I can see it and make it different. So you see in module three now there's the module one inside of it. So you can move things around as necessary if you want to depending on what you're doing in the course. You can also modify these items so I can click on the drop down and modify and this will allow me to change things about the entire block of content. So one thing is to change the title. Um, notice that it does title things as module one, module two, module three, and if you move them around, it may no longer be module one, so you can rename it that if you want to. Um, you can have it to where it is hidden, um, to where it's just something for you to see and the students cannot see it. You can have it to where it is shown only on certain dates, or you can have it to where it is shown always for your uh, students. That's mainly the only things you're going to do in the parent block itself. Um, in a second we'll show you how to edit individual items within the module, but for the most part just for the block itself you would just change the title and maybe change the dates when it is open, um, but a lot of times you might just want to keep it always open and then put restrictors on individual assignments of as to when they're due. So we'll save those changes. So again, that was editing the entire block by choosing the drop down and modify. So then what we can do is click on this arrow and it will expand out the content items for us in that module. So if I just right click and open in a new tab, it will let me see what the material actually looks like. 
So the items that have this globe icon are the content pieces and they look like this. This is where they read the material and see the different, it's basically the online textbook components. It's got graphs and images. Um, it will also have little built in type of uh, formative questions every once in a while will be built in here. Um, and so that is what the content itself will look like. And so you can see those, those are going to be the ones that are on the globe. Now if you want to edit those, you can click this drop down and modify them. It will take you to the page with the content that you can actually add to. You could actually add a summary if you want to. Um, you can add things to it if you want to. Or if you don't want it at all, you could just delete it and delete that piece of content out if you want to. Additionally, you can move things around. You can click on it and move it and then you can say I want it to be in module one, but I want it to be after this piece of content. So you can move things around if they're not in the order that you like. So most modules are going to have a pretest at the beginning and then they'll have little practice assessments within the course or within the module and then at the very end there will be an actual quiz itself. So you can edit these things you can, and they will have a little pencil icon beside them for you to, to note them. So we can come here and we can look at the questions if we want to. So we can click on this and this will allow us to see what the questions have been added. And these are usually um, question pools. So this is how you would look at it. You would see question one. This is one that everyone's going to get and you can choose preview and it'll give you a little pop-up of what the question is and how it is, how you answer it. Notice that question two is a um, question pull. So for question two, they're gonna get one of the following three. So select one from the group of three. So out of these three questions, they're gonna get one of them. And so you can preview them to see what they are. Now if you didn't want this question to be asked at all, any of these three options, you can remove the entire question itself. Or if you just wanted it be, be, to be between two of them and you didn't want the third one there, you can come and remove just that one option and then they would get one of the first two. So that is what the, the quizzes themselves look like. Again, you can notice some of them are just one question everybody's going to get that question and then some of them are in groups to where they're getting either or but maybe between one or two different questions which is like a question poll okay so we can edit um, we can actually do a couple of things with these with these questions so I showed you how you can remove questions but uh, this is how you can actually add additional questions into the quiz if you want to so if you scroll to the bottom you will see that you can choose, you can select from assessments or you can select from libraries. So if you choose select from libraries, it will give you the option to select from the libraries of any of the Lumen courses. So here you would look through, you know, if we're doing college algebra, we would look through algebra. If I want a question on exponents, I can go through here and pick. It's probably a little bit easier though to pick from assessments because this is going to pull the questions from the assessments within this particular course so that you know your, your questions are lining up with what's being taught in the course. So we would select from assessments and then it's going to give us, we'll be able to pick which assessments. So these are all the assessments in this course. And so if I want to pull some from the practice chemistry and context, I can select that and use this assessment and then at the bottom it's going to give me questions that were in that practice assessment and so of course I can preview those if I want to and if I like it I can click it and add it to the assessment So on this, I can put in the number of points they get if they answer it correctly, how many tries they get. Um, but of course, for the most things, I'm just going to use the default. So I'm going to add that question in. So now it has been added into my pool here. So everybody is going to get that question. 
Now I set this one to where it's one that everybody is going to get. What I can also do is to create a group which is similar to this one. And so to do that, you follow this exact same procedures of selecting assessments and then coming down and picking the assessment that I want to use and use this assessment and then coming down and selecting the questions I want to use. And then I want to add that and I want to add as a question group. So now if you see and you scroll down, this one was the first one I added. Everybody's going to get it no matter what. This one is going to be part of a group. So select one from this group. This is the first one I added. In most cases, you would be adding more than one question to a group. So in that case, I would come and I would choose, say, three questions, add, choose how many points they're worth, and then add as a question group. And then now we'll see that question 26, select one from the following three, and those were the three that I put into place. So in addition to adding and deleting questions from the default quiz, you can also create a print version of it. And this will allow you to, um, you know, if you need a print copy, if you need a paper copy for a student or whatnot um, to take offline, you can create it. Um, you can have it create a variety of versions or just one version. You can have it generate the answer key as well. And then we just continue on and it will actually produce a paper copy for us to print off. Now while you may or may not want to create a print version or you may or may not want to edit the questions um, and add or delete some, something that you're definitely going to want to do is the assessment settings. And so you can get to this multiple ways. You can get to it just from the main home page when you go to the quiz area and choose settings or if you're in the questions area you can choose assessment settings it'll take you to the same place but this is something you do want to set up this is where you're determining how long they have to take the exam the window of time how many attempts all that jazz so you can put in typed instructions if you want to this is where you decide when the quiz is going to be available so in most cases you would put this quiz is going to be available always until the end date and that end date is going to be, say, the 24th. You can also choose to keep open for ungraded practice after this due date, which this is great if you have a lot of question pools in your exams to where, um, you know, it's picking between three questions because after they take the quiz, that's what's going to record the grade, but they can still go back into the quiz and continue to retake it um, and it will pull different questions if there are question pools so that they can just get extra practice. So that might be something that you want to do um, just for students to have practice. Now you will notice that there's lots of settings to go through when you set up your quiz. The good thing is that you don't have to set them up for every single quiz. The first time you set up the, the quiz, you're going to want to go through all these settings and have them set the way that you want. However, after you have it set, here at the top of every quiz will be copy options from and then from there you would just be able to choose it and then it would just copy those settings over. So for example, I'm taking special time to work through this practice module quiz one essential ideas to make sure that I've got all my questions set up um, and my settings are correct. When I go to my next quiz, when I'm setting it up, all I'm going to have to do is copy options from and then I would just pick this particular quiz, the mo uh, practice one module quiz, and it would just copy all these settings over to prevent me from having to go and set at one up every single time. But let's go through these settings just so you know the options. So it's encouraged that you display one question at a time, but you can choose to have them all on one page. You probably want the quiz style so that the if they are allowed to retake the exam, it gives them whole new versions, um, especially with those of the question poll. You can choose the number of times they can take the assessment. A lot of times it's just once, but sometimes you might choose twice and then allow them to keep their best score, their last score, or their average score. So this one would be the student could take the quiz twice and it would keep their highest grade.
You can even choose if they have a penalty so they can so in this case, if they take the quiz a second time, they have a 3% penalty. So um, it's up to you on that one. A lot of people will just choose to have two attempts, take the highest score, or just have one attempt and call it a day. You can have to have different try. You can choose to have different tries on each version of a question, so they can answer each question multiple times. You can choose for the assessment to show their scores either after each question, at the end of the assessments, um, or not at all. Probably the most common is at the end of the assessment, show their scores. You can also choose to show the answers. And you can do, choose to do that after the version is submitted or never. And that's really up to you and that's showing them the correct answers. You want to make sure here to check that students can see their scores in the grade book after the, after the assessment is submitted um, because all of this is going to go immediately into the D2L grade book. Something else you want to look at is the time limit and access control. And so late passes essentially allow the student to take the quiz after the deadline if they missed it. So you can choose to allow them to have a late pass. So you can say up to two late passes um, and they can use the late passes after the due date or you can restrict it by date to where you can use this pass up until this day or time. So it might be that it's due on the 24th and you can use your late passes up until the 26th. You put in the time limit. You can choose to let the student work past the time limit if, time limit if you want to. You can put a password in if you want to. And that will take care of that particular um, category. Under grading and feedback, you do want to make sure that to have it count in the grade book and you want to make sure that this is zero because this is the minimum score to receive credit. So, you know, if they just answer it and do everything wrong, you still want them to get the zero. So you want to make sure that that is zero. And that's pretty much it for this particular grading block. Now under helpful hints, you can choose if you want them to get the hints, if hints are built into that question, which sometimes they are, you can choose to allow them to get that. And something here that you specifically want to use um, in set is the calculator option. So you can choose if you want them to be able to access a calculator on screen. And that will be built in there. So at this point, I've done all of my settings. I'm going to save those changes. Now, like I said before, that was a lot of settings to have to edit. But what I'm able to do is since I did pretest module one, I'm able to come right in here to this practice and I'm able to come right in here and I'm able to edit those settings and I'm able to come right down and I'm able to put in the start date. I want to make it always available until it's due and I'll say that this one is due on the 26th. But remember what is great is I can copy options from and I'm going to copy options from my first assessment. And from there when I pick that practice, it's going to go ahead and put in all that information from from um, what I just set up. It's already going to copy all those settings so I don't have to set them all up again. And then I just save the changes. And so from here on out when I go through setting up my due dates and whatnot, I'll just come in, drop down, settings, make sure it's always available until end date, put in whatever that end date is going to be for it, and then just say also by the way make it these set make it copy all these settings so that makes it much more streamlined in terms of setting up your due dates now you may want something a little bit different for your quiz rather than your practices if you're considering those different um, and again you can come in and edit those settings and you can change the dates and then you might want to set up separate settings for those and then just copy those from a quiz option to where you have different settings for your quizzes while you have different settings for your practice. But that will make your life a little bit easier. 
All right, so lastly, what you can do is at the end of the module, you can come down and add an item. So if you want something brand new that's not in this module, you can add a brand new assessment. If you want to build your own assessment, you can add a link. Um, if you want to, if there's, you know, a cool resource that you want to have available, you can do that. So you can add in additional things if you like. So say that we did want to add in our own assessment, we could add an assessment. We could give it a name. We could come in here and set up our due dates in our um, settings like we've done before on all of our others. And then we can create the assessment. And this is going to look very similar to what we were doing a little while ago when we were editing an assessment that's already been created. So I can come and select from other assessments or select from libraries. More than likely you're going to select from assessments and then you would pick the assessment that you want to choose from. And then we're going to use these assessments. We pick our questions. We add those in. We choose how many points they're worth. And then we can either just make them individual questions where everybody gets the, um, each question or you can add it as a question group. And there you would have it. And then we could just continue to add in questions or I could maybe go to another assessment now and say, okay, I want to pick some from this quiz. So this is a way you can make a quiz made up of all the different practice questions that they've used in the past. You would just go through each practice, use these assessments, pick the questions and then choose to either make them individuals or make them a group. And that is how you would go about adding your questions to make a brand new assessment, very similar to what you'd be doing if you were just creating your own assessment. Okay, so at this point we have our course ready to go. So now what we want to do is export it to go into D2L. So over on this side, we're gonna choose export and we're gonna export the entire course. We're gonna choose Brightspace by D2L and we're gonna export the cartridge. And we're just gonna save this file. And it's gonna download to our computer And so here it is, and we're just going to copy that, and I'm just going to paste that onto my desktop for the time being so that I can import it into my course. Okay, so my entire Lumen course that lives in this Lumen OHM area is, going, is now exported, and I'm going to go put it into D2L so that my students will only have to log into D2L. They'll never, ever, ever come to this. The next step is to put the course cartridge into your D2L course. So you would go into your D2L course. This one's just a sample one, but it would be, you know, your summer 2021 or whatever the course is. And you're going to go to Course Admin. And you're going to go to Import, Export, Copy Components. And we're going to Import. And we're going to start. And we're going to grab that file that I just exported out of the uh, OHM area, I'm going to grab it and import it into here. Now by doing this, it takes away any requirements for the students to have to go to the OHM website. They will only log into D2L, only get their content from D2L. Um, it also does not require that you go to the OHM website. The students don't have special access code or any of that. They just log into D2L and see their content. Also, the grade items will, uh, once the student does something that is graded in the course, the grade items will be automatically created and dropped into your D2L gradebook. So you won't have to log into a separate portal area to see your grades. It will automatically come over. Um, in addition to that, since this is a D2L course, you are welcome to add in additional things. So if you wanted to add in a discussion or add in an assignment or add in anything else in the course or a different grade item for participation, something that is external to OHM, you're welcome to do that. Once the course is imported, you can go in there and add additional things um, that will live inside of your D2L course that the students will do that are not affiliated with OHM, but since it's all running through D2L, you're able to build from there as well. All right, so now that the course has been exported, we're just gonna view the content and make sure everything came over clean. 
So we'll just go to the content area and notice over here on the side, all of those modules have been created for me. So I'm able to click on those and then all those links are right here within the course. So I'm able to click on those and notice that it'll take me right within the course and then these were the content files that we were looking at earlier. So the student again is staying right within D2L the entire time. They're able to come back and we can check out one of these assessments. Let's just grab one of the practice assessments that I set up earlier. So it's all set up, it's ready to go. Now the first time that you as a teacher look at this, you want to make sure that it does talk to the correct um, course in your OHM account. So before, once you import it in, you do want to click on at least one assessment. It doesn't matter which assessment and we only have to do it the first time. And so you want to choose this and the more than likely in most cases you're going to want to do this one. Associate the LMS course to the existing course ID. Because if you remember at the beginning of the video I copied the course and I made myself a new course and I want that copied course to be associated with this one. And the reason why you want to do this is you don't want this course getting associated to a past course to where you have multiple pieces of data coming in, multiple student groups from different semesters. So that's why I'd ask you this question. It's only going to ask it to you the first time you click on an assessment as the teacher when you're setting up your course and for the most part you're going to choose the first option. So then we're going to continue. So from here on out, you're going to be able to see that quiz and practice it. So you can do a teacher preview or you can actually take it as a student to see what it looks like. So we'll, try, we'll start and this is what it looks like. So similar to the D2L quizzes, but you can tell it is a little bit different. But again, it's right there within D2L. They're not going outside of it. So they click on the answer. They can submit the question. And then I had it set to where it tells me um, if I'm right or wrong on that particular question. And again, that's a setting, I, um, that's a setting option. So we go to the next question. Notice that I had it uh, selected to where the calculator is built right in on every single question. Of course we don't need it on every single question but sometimes it might be easier than having to select it on individual questions. So again we just continue through and we move through our different questions. You can skip around here and again this one only has five questions. It's based upon how you set it up and then it will also show you your, your countdown. All right, so I choose that I'm done with the quiz. Obviously, I scored terribly. Um, and so what will happen is within a matter of minutes, this is going to create a grade item into the grade book, um, and we'll be able to see those grades come over. So if we go over to the grade book, and we go to Manage Grades, Notice that that grade item has come over for us. It is linked to an external learning tool because that is the grade in the course, um, or that is the L that's connected to the LTI tool from OHM. And then this has been created so that as other students come in, their grade will populate right there within the inner grades area. Now you may say, well, I have lots of practice quizzes and assignments within this grade book. So if you look, I've got lots of different ones. Why are they not in the grade book yet? Once one person takes the assessment, and that one person can be you as the teacher if you want, once one person does it, it will automatically come over to the gradebook area for you. So notice that, um, say for example, this physical, um, this matter and properties I, um, external learning tool grade item is not already in the gradebook for us because no one has taken it yet. And so under manage grades, we see that it is not there yet. Um, and so you could either take it to force it to go to create a great item or you could just wait till the first uh, student took it. And so I'll take it really quick so we can see what it looks like once I get done taking it. All right, so I just took the practice uh, matter and properties quiz. I didn't score very well on it either. But notice if I go to the grades area and I go to the manage grades it went ahead and made that great item for me since at least one person has taken it. So that's how this grade uh, book will work. Now, keep in mind that you can still edit as much as you want to in terms of the grade book, the quizzes, the discussions, assignments. You can still build as much content as you want to in D2L. So say for example, I wanna come in here and set up my grade book. I can still come to category and I can still come and say, well, I want all of my practice materials to be worth 
40% of the final grade. And then I would be able to come in here and edit these and move those grade items that were automatically created. I can move them into the practice category to make them count as the correct weight. So this is something that you do, would want to set up either as you go, as things come in, or as you, as you take them all yourself at the beginning and set those up. And then I might want to say, okay, I want one for quizzes. And the quizzes in the class are going to be 60%. And then as the grade items come in for the quizzes, you would just click on them and move them into the category so that your weights are set up appropriately. Also, I did want to mention again that you can create assignments and discussions. None of those came over from the exported course, but you are welcome to create those yourself just like you would a regular D2L assignment, just like you would a regular D2L discussion. You can do that. You can also come to the content here and you can add in more content items. So if I come in and I say, I want to have a final project. I can create that myself down here at the bottom and I can pull in, you know, the assignment that goes with that or anything that I want to pull in that. Now, it is important to note that when you edit these things in D2L, it is not talking back to the course in OHM. So any edits you make here are not going to be edits that will go right back into OHM. So really the idea is to create them in OHM and then come back um, to set them up in OHM first. So now you can make um, edits if you need to here. If you need to come and reset a due date, you can actually come to the module. You can come beside the name of the module. So let's just say this pretest. I can come beside it and I can actually click on it. I can come here and choose LTI home and then I can edit the settings here. So there is a way to come in here and make edits if you need to. And again that was just to go to content, click on the item itself, and when you get to this page do LTI home and then you can actually um, edit the questions themselves like we did before if you wanted to edit the questions in the exam um, you can come here and then right within D2L edit those questions we did that all before um, or you can come and edit those settings if you need to change some of the settings here in terms of when it's due any of these settings that we set up before you can edit it right within D2L as well so it's up to you One last thing that might be important is when you click on the item itself, the quiz or the practice, and you choose LTI home, you'll see item analysis. And you can click on this and if students had taken this, this uh, item yet or this assessment yet, which they have not, you would be able to see a breakdown of the analysis here. Um, and you'll be able to use that to analyze your test results and your data. Um, you can get a summary of those assessment results or export those um, details as well.